I have with me Richard Ahiagba, who is the Deputy Director of Communications for the NPP. Good morning, Richard. Very good morning. How are you? I'm okay. I'm going to go back with news today, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I also have with me Honorable <laughs> Alhassan Suhini, MP for Tamale North. Good morning. Good morning, too. How are you? I'm terrific. Hope you are, too. I am. Thank you look nice in your blue. Well, I, I saw you in the mirror. Uh, okay, yes. Sorry, sorry. You, you, didn't, you didn't get the memo. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, so we'll take a look at our first story here. I'm reading from sissinewsroom.com, a really sad story, actually. And it has to do with the Ayawaso West Wogon uh, situation and the, the findings of the commission. So it says, officer who slapped Sam George to walk free as government rejects some findings of the short commission. I'm going to read it briefly. The Akofado government has rejected some of the recommendations of the Emil Short Commission of Inquiry, which investigated the Ayawaso West Wogon by election violence. According to part of the white paper cited by City News, the government said the report failed to address the first and most critical of the terms of reference of the commission. The failure to do so disables government from accepting in whole the findings of the commission. So I'm going to go down now to what they had to say about the, the young man who assaulted um, the, the MP. It says here, the government in the paper argued that the facts presented by the commission supported, and I quote, a valid defense of provocation for the said assault by Mohammed Suleimana. So this was a, a young man who slapped um, Sam George, who's a member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. And the, gov the government is saying here that um, the, 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 in the paper argued that the facts presented by the commission supported a valid defense of provoca provocation for the said assault. So we'll, we'll, I, I, Richard, I think I'll start with you to help us get some clarity on exactly what it means when you say a valid defense of <laughs> provocation, just because you are, you're speaking for government yeah. here. You don't have uh, to get into the law a bit. Right, right. Maybe we, we can uh, explain mm -hmm. what's on the, on the face of it yeah. appears to be uh, a reaction yeah. that elicited another reaction. But first of all, uh, good morning to you and to my brother and to all your, your viewers. Um, Good morning to them. Um, that issue, I think you, you are not the first person uh, to have taken your time to read it. I did the same when I, when I uh, saw the news bit last night. Um, but I think it's, it's clear what the report is seeking to say. I think, are we, that maybe, is that the only aspect of Oh, they the also report? talked about double, uh, double, of course, is the, the young man who was carrying uh, a weapon. So he's going to face some, uh, the CID next. Right. So right. he's going to be so held he's accountable. So he's been referred to. Yeah, to the yeah. Criminal Investigations yeah. Department, and we're going to compensate the victims of, right. of the Iowa's West Wogan uh, violence. So they, they, the only, you know. Bit that concerns. The confusing bit is someone who slapped yeah. Uh, an MP uh, for everyone to see, not, not being held accountable. Yeah, so I think what the report says, in my uh, literal understanding there, uh, is that the, the report itself mm -hmm. gave basis mm -hmm. to establish that the action taken by the officer mm -hmm. uh, has basis in terms of him being able to defend himself based on the report's own uh, findings. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a natural uh, uh, reference to what the report said mm -hmm. and what action was occasioned. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a pretty straightforward issue. You cannot say, for example, if uh, he he's Major Suleiman. Is he, is he a major or some? Uh, no, he's just yeah, he's a, Mohammed, Mohammed Suleiman. Yeah. If, if he, per the white paper, referred to be punished for that act, an act which the report provides justification for who would have been uh, undoing ourselves by, you know, just having him prosecuted because there will not be any basis. He can use the report as his defense because the report does so for him. So but I you think saw the video, shameful. right? I saw the video, but then uh, we all saw the video before the commissions, mm -hmm. where the commission of inquiry was commissioned to okay. work. So okay. if we saw the video and we needed more, and what we needed more to validate what we saw, 
says that the action that was occasioned has no basis and is a legitimate def self-defense action taken by uh, the, the operative. I think uh, that's where we leave it. Okay. Arabo Sohini, what do you make of the report? Well, um, and government's uh, response, actually. Good morning to Richard and good morning to our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North uh, constituency. Um, I think that for some of us, it doesn't come as a surprise, the conclusions that government have reached on this report. You recall that as a party, we, um, did, Hesitated. we did, you know, state our you know, reservations about what we thought the commission was going to do. Um, partly we have indicated. I say partly because if you look at the report, somehow there seemed to be an attempt by the commissioners to have done a good job. Mm -hmm. I think that um, if you have government rejecting some of the very serious findings that they made, it is perhaps because government is disappointed mm -hmm. that they did not leave, the commissioners did not live up to their expectation. An expectation that we saw earlier mm -hmm. and perhaps thought that the commissioners would live up to that expectation. And that is why we express our reservations about the whole exercise, even though we uh, indicated that our members mm -hmm. who were invited were at will to decide to you know, cooperate mm -hmm. with the commission or not. So the back and forth, in this case, the government white paper versus the you know, commission's report uh, comes to us as no surprise. Because even if you look at the defenses that the government have put up in their rejections, mm -hmm. these are things that many of their communicators you know, said. Some said some judge deserved the slap regardless of the fact that even constitutionally it is it is it is it is unacceptable to manhandle a member of parliament you know that it's part of you know the immunities that members of parliament enjoy you cannot by the constitution the constitution not just any ordinary law the constitution is the mother of all laws the Even if the Member of Parliament provokes you, you can't... The Constitution, the Constitution frowns against, you know, a, a member of the public or any other person, you know, uh, assaulting a Member of Parliament. Hmm. And what clearly happened was an assault. Anybody who watched that video saw the gentleman jump out of his car, rush to St. George. So at what point did St. George provoke him? What? I mean, how was he? How did he provoke him by talking? Mm -hmm. Because you did not, at any point in time, see Saint George throw anything at him—not his hands, nothing. So, by talking, was how he provoked him. But you heard government officials at the time celebrate the fact that Saint George was slapped. So it doesn't come to us as a surprise that you know government will reject you know, a suggestion for the person who was involved to be prosecuted. And for me, this, like many other people have already suggested, was a dress rehearsal for 2020. Hmm. So look, they want some of these hoodlums to beat more people in authority in 2020. <laughs> they want that to happen. So prosecuting this person will demoralize the base. They want this to happen. They want people to be manhandled. They want people to be intimidated to a point that they cannot do what is expected of them constitutionally as citizens of this country. And that is why, as a party, consistently I have said that the victory of the NDC in the 2020 general elections is in our hands as a people. It's in our hands. The vigilance that we demonstrate, the hunger that we demonstrate, the determination that we demonstrate to save this country is what will enable us to snatch that victory. Because we all know the kind of leader that we have. He's not somebody who is noted for giving up power. He's not. Even when he didn't have it, he fought all the way. In 2008, he fought until there was no way. In 2012, he fought and later ended in a court. So he is not somebody who will now easily hand over power. And so if he is grooming people 
to intimidate and manhandle people, even members of parliament. And you are recommending that those people should be prosecuted. Definitely, he will reject it. Because he needs that to happen so that he can hold on to power. I mean, as for double, what is it? Check the laws about possession of firearm. The worst is six months or 4,000 Ghana cities fine. If you don't pay the 4,000 Ghana cities, you go in for six months. That's the worst that people get. So if they agree that, okay, double should be refer referred to the CID. Didn't we see what happened in Kumasi when the national security officer was manhandled by these same hoodlums? What happened? Those Delta Force members went to court with the money in their back pocket to pay and walk. And that is why, again, they will agree with the compensation. Because it's not their money. It's not their money. So those are some of this government money, state money. So they won't challenge those ones. Double will go, report to the CID, admit, like he admitted at the commission, that yes, I was holding the weapon. You are taken through the process. On your plea, you are sentenced to six months, I mean, 4,500, 5,000 Ghana cities in default six months. He will be in court with that money. He'll pay and walk. So that is not something they will want to contest. I, 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 I think that this whole, you know, uh, 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 posturing of government is yet again another vindication of the fact that the 2020 general election is going to be, you know, uh, 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 fought using these, you know, uh, 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 hoodlums. But we have laws now, right, against people who fund vigilante groups and the likes, you can face up to 15 years in, in prison for engaging in such activities. So don't you think that's, that's progress? That's what the whole pretense of this government is about. That is why you will have the president signing into law the Right to Information uh, uh, Act, Act yeah. and turn around to shut down radio stations that are critical of him. Okay, but that, that, was, that, that has no, some licensing no, no, issues no, and well, payments but, but we, as well. We, so it wasn't necessarily please, a freedom please, of speech please, issue. Please, please, it is. Okay. It is. In fact, the Freedom House International has outlined some of these ways mm -hmm. of muzzling press using legislation and, and, and those things. Okay. So I'm saying that, and, and your question about the uh, 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 passage of that, uh, what do you call it, vigilante bill, bill yeah. that's the whole thing. I mean, that is the pretense I talk about. But if you we know, enforce it, the, it the, won't, the, it won't there is a pretense of trying to look what he is not. Okay. So, for example, you don't need the vigilante bill to prosecute Suleimana, mm -hmm. who has been found to deserve prosecution by the commissioners. And remember, the commissioners are not just mere, you know, uh, 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 citizens. They are judges, I mean, at least. We know Emil Short as well. Mm -hmm. And they find these people liable for prosecution. And you say no. Mm -hmm. So what use will a vigilante bill be when there are clear violations against the law that you don't, you are not even willing to prosecute? Okay. Let me bring Richard in here. Richard, so we, we've talked about the vigilantism um, bill. We've gone through a process of figuring out how to hold young people who use political parties and excuse as an excuse to harm others. Right? So to be a vigilante isn't supposed to be someone who harms people. How, how do we ensure that other people won't be empowered by this to say, okay, if someone provokes me, I can also slap them because I'm, I'm a national security operative. Where in this country where we see policemen slapping citizens and we're like, no, the, even if the person did something wrong, they're innocent until proven guilty. How do we ensure that moving forward, people won't use this as an excuse to, to act out and harm others? You know, there's a sense in which I see uh, Honorable Soini's discussion this morning as an attempt to take us back and stagnate our progress. But we need to learn I'm, from, I'm from, from but, our, but our experiences. Definitely. But you see, when you have a conversation before us this way, and you are supposed to make your comment, you do so within the constraint of the law. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about a report that says that an individual, ordinarily, an act that is committed, uh, mm -hmm. is guilty. There is no justification, there's no provision in any of our law books that says you can assault even any citizen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not only an MP that that accommodation is made for. You cannot just assault anybody. But they, they, it says here that he was provoked. Now I'm coming. 
So is that an exception? If someone provokes you, I, then you can assault them? What I'm trying to say is that he made an assertion that you cannot mm -hmm. assault, uh, assault a, a member of parliament. I'm mm -hmm. saying that ordinarily you cannot assault anybody. Okay. Okay. But the incident in case where we're looking at, mm -hmm. the commission that is making the recommendation says in its own findings mm -hmm. that there is basis to justify the action of the individual. And that's and provocation. Yes. And government on the basis of constitution uh -huh, rejects or did not prefer that individual to be punished because there's basis for supporting his action in the commission's report. And my question now, is to do, you. Do we, do we have an understanding of that? We have an understanding okay. of that. So that if you are saying that would that not engender somebody. Because we already have young men going in to see appointed CEO's offices, relieving them of their duties, let, let, locking up their, their, their offices. I, I'm, I'm with you. Before this, this even came out. Yes. How do we ensure that they don't use this as an excuse to start acting out? But you see, we have to be careful. The fact that we don't want to use that or we don't want people to look upon that as incentive to do anything does not mean we should prosecute somebody who is, who is not guilty. Do you believe no, no. provocation you, no, no. is enough hold on, hold on. to, to, to relieve really of me. slapping a member of parliament? It's not me. It's not I'm me. just trying yeah. to get your thoughts on this. Yes, it's not me who said so. Okay. It's the same commission that my brother seeks to elevate. Mm -hmm. He said they have serious people. Yes, huh? they do. Justice Emil Short is mm -hmm. on that commission that he, he seeks to say. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Madame Nana Herita. Uh, is it uh, Harry and Tabruz or something? Yes. Uh, ben Sabos. And government rejected some of their findings. Yes, and that, that, that part, we can come to that. I'm saying that They're this very commission... very credible people, yes. Yes, very credible people, uh -huh. elevated people. Yes. And they wrote a report to say there's justification for the guy's behavior. That, for no, me, I, is sufficient basis. So let's not try to use that as an extension to say because okay. that me, action let me, let me was... Okay. Wait, let me, let me just land okay. for you. That action was occasioned, uh, and there is justification for it because it may serve as a reference point for somebody. We cannot prosecute an individual who is not guilty by commission's report. Okay. You understand? So that question does not even arise. Okay. You see, the issue about rejection, which my brother says is the posturing of government, government is not doing anything that the constitution did not direct it to do. Mm -hmm. The portions of the rejection of the report is grounded in constitution. My brother knows well about that. Okay, if you read Article two, uh, 281C, it talks about the commission giving reasons for the conclusions that it reaches in its report. But when you fail to do that, then you leave a room for the government to reject that because it means that you don't find any justification or uh, reason to support the conclusion you have reached. So on that grounds, the constitution allows for rejection. And I cite to you other commission reports mm -hmm. that the white paper of government rejected portions on account of this. You look at the Justice Baregba Commission, there were portions of that report that were rejected. But Richard, huh? my so, question to you, and I hope you can answer this question for me. Let me just read this again. The government in the paper argued that the facts presented by the commission supported a valid defense of provocation hmm. for the said assault, a valid defense of provocation. Yes. You watched this young man mm -hmm. slap a member of parliament. Yeah. We all saw he did not touch him. We're in a country where policemen would assault a citizen mm -hmm. when the person is not even proven guilty yet. Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that we don't, we, we, we don't end up contributing to this vigilante issue that we're dealing with? Before this report, even when people are not provoked, is provocation an enough defense for slapping another person, irrespective of their status in our society? So I already answered that question What's for you. What's your response? I, Sorry. My, my response is that the commission report answers your question. So To say mm -hmm. that on account of what we saw, you and I saw, okay, they, based on their inquiry, find reasons to say that it's justifiable, not me. The same commission that uh, Justice Emil Short is on, do you think provocation is enough reason to harm another human being, to assault another person? I would defer to Justice Emil Short on that, because his report mm -hmm. concludes that. So I, I, my view... 
Uh, my view on the matter. What is uh, the conclusion? He you? says that there's valid basis. No, that's government's position. That's no, no, government's but position. government position referencing the report. Oh, okay. Uh, but okay, what, okay. No, Richard, uh, that's fine. Continue. No, no, Jeffa, mm -hmm. please read that portion for so you need to hear no. the same no. portion. It's no, okay. really. okay. no, no, you read it. No, no, if you read it, then you would have heard. We will go for a break now. You understand? So it's not my position on City TV. Keep your questions and comments coming with the hashtag Breakfast Daily, and the WhatsApp line is. 0550-585-832. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. I've received some of your messages, so I'll read them briefly and then um, talk to our guest who we still have here with us. So um, there's a, 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 well, a comment here. Jifa, do you recollect the composition of the Emil Schultz Commission? If anything at all, there was a foremost criminal law professor on the commission. Her name is Professor Henrietta Mensa Bonsu. It's Nanado telling us that Professor Menza Bonsu did not have a better appreciation of the facts and the essential ingredients of the offense. Jifa, you should be disturbed. The assailant said some judge insulted him. That was why he slapped him. Insult is not provocation. Insult is not a justification to the assault. So before the break, Richard Ahiagwa, who's a deputy director of communications for MPP, was making his point. So I'll let him wrap up on this. And perhaps you can answer this question if insult is, is, is enough justification for assault. Look, um, we, we saw a portion of the video, hmm. okay? Uh, that was at the point people were recording. What preceded that? We, we, we haven't seen. Well, that was captured in the commission, right? When everyone right, I'm saying to, yes, to, yes. To but, but tell their side of the story. But our reference is to the video, okay. which is the, and the commission, the commission well. report. Now, in the commission report, as I was answering for you to your question, is that the commission identified the behavior of the honorable member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram mm -hmm. Sam George to be unbecoming. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And went on to make reference for the punishment of the individual who slapped him. Okay. You understand? Now, I read to you the Constitution 2801C, uh, mm -hmm. which talks about a commission of inquiry providing reasons for the justification it reaches. Mm -hmm. Now, in that case, uh, you have two instances where the individual who took an act to you know, assault uh, the member of parliament was seen as having acted in ways that the, con uh, the commission finds the, mid uh, the MP's behavior to be unbecoming. Okay. So that's a just uh, basis for that individual's action. Okay. okay. So because, so the, we're saying because the MP's behavior was unbecoming, exactly. it now warrants him being assaulted by a national security operative. Yes. So That's what you're saying. So I'm saying that the commission's report mm. did not show reason why after it identified that the MP's behavior was unbecoming, did not show reason why that uh, national security operative should be punished okay. by constitution. Okay. Should, they should have done it, but they didn't. Okay. So on what grounds would government say, go and prosecute the man? Okay. You understand? Let's, Constitutionally, let's... government cannot do that. Okay. So the, the, uh, the commission has a responsibility to bring the reason, which it didn't bring. So, so the you, government you rejected the, on, on the, grounds, the, the, the commission's findings based on... On the basis of constitution. What information didn't they bring that government couldn't use to prosecute the man? The commission is supposed to bring reasons in its report, mandated by constitution, to do that. But they didn't do that. They didn't bring enough they didn't, reason yes, for the to, man assaulting the yes, member of parliament? Yes, because, because one reason they showed you is that they said the, minister, uh, the MP mm -hmm. did not act appropriately. Mm -hmm. Okay, on mm -hmm. account of him not acting appropriately, however, go ahead and prosecute this guy. Mm -hmm. Then what is the reason why you want to prosecute this guy when you have already identified the MP didn't act appropriately? Is the MP so that not reason, acting appropriately enough reason for him to be assaulted? That's, is that government's position? Th no, that because the commission didn't provide more reasons for the man assaulting a member of parliament, see, we have to reject their finding? Yes, yeah, so that is a question you, you need to ask to the commission, why didn't they provide the reason? Because government is not... We have government's response. I'm asking you yes, as I'm the deputy director you. of yes, government of, is of, acting, of NPP. Yes, government is acting on the report based on the constitutional direction. So we cannot do anything other than what the constitution directs. Because, mind you, government is not rewriting the, uh, the commission's report. Okay, let so me... Government, let me, uh, excuse me. Government is only acting on the content as wholesomely presented to it. 
okay. okay, based on their guidance of the constitution. So if the reason is not adduced in the, uh, uh, the commission's report, government cannot make it up. Okay, thank you very much, Richard. Honorable Suhini, your response. You know, if I, I, I was looking at Richard and listening and trying to make sense of, you know, what he's trying to put across. And unfortunately, I, I, I can only pity him. His job is a difficult one. But yes, you just make your point. Yes, and then yes, make your point. My point. Then, then sure. I'll I'll make my point. He was, he was yes, referring but, to me when, yes, when yes, he was. So yes. I'm making okay, my point. Okay. Yes. I mean, I, I find... I find his job very difficult. Please, okay. yes, make it's but okay. I think that he my job have, is not difficult. Thank you. Could have, he could have made it easier for himself okay. by being himself. Okay. You know, he, he should be himself. Okay. As I mean, in the deputy director of communications. No, he should be Richard Ahagbe. He should yeah. be Richard. I okay. mean, he should forget okay. the <laughs> Let, Let's focus on your listen, listen, response Jeffrey, to his submission. That is my and response. Not, not his. No, his no, that's person. my response. That's okay. my response. Okay. My response is that look, clearly, he knows. What he is saying, mm -hmm. you know, it, it does not sit well with his soul. Okay. I mean, okay. how do you, how do you, <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's be, let's be, let's be sincere. Okay. This, what, this please, is, this please, is, this please is, this is, this is, this something should go, I mean, some of these things should go beyond partisanship. It should go beyond politics. Yeah. I mean, you are looking at the member bigger, parliament being assaulted. You are, you are looking at the bigger picture of victim blaming. You are looking at the bigger picture of emboldening people who already, in some cases, even the professional ones, sometimes get excessive mm -hmm. and do things that we all have condemned in the past. Yeah. That is, assault citizens because they are in uniform. I mean, how many times haven't we discussed it here? That no matter the level of provocation, a person in uniform must always respect the laws of this country and must always have the sense I mean, the presence of mind to, to still, you know, carry himself or herself in a, in a dignified manner. How many times haven't we discussed stories of that nature? And when I referred to the assault on MP, I was actually making reference to contempt of parliament, which, you know, is not even a bar to a possible prosecution if the contempt is determined to be of a criminal nature. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Sam George's uh, 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 situation, the gentleman can be cited for contempt of parliament. Yeah. And beyond that, he can still be prosecuted. But here you are with a government report, also with a commission report, providing all the insulation this gentleman needs. Because you already know that by our, you know, Supreme Court ruling, once, you know, a finding is made, about you in a commission's report, you can no longer be prosecuted mm -hmm. based on you know what is gathered in that court. So the gentleman has all the insulation, but I'm not surprised. I mean, the information I'm hearing is that the gentleman threatened, you know, to reveal more okay, if he was you. ever we, we, touched. Okay, so we can't as a result that. of this. Okay, but, so, but, we, so we can't so, confirm so, that, so, and so, we need to move yes, on. So please wrap up. So, so, so the point, the point has to be made that look, we as a party stand vindicated. Okay. We think that this government did not mean well when they okay. set up the commission. And that is why they will poo-poo some of these strong findings that we all knew, you know, were already the case even before the commission uh, uh, started work. And government is repeating some of their communicators' defense and arguments at the time in rejecting some of these you know, uh, uh, findings. Uh, critical findings. Okay, and thank you. For me, the bigger picture, the bigger picture is what 2020 elections portends. I mean, what this, what, what this okay. means, the impact of this on the 2020 general elections. Okay. Because this... Please wrap up for us. <laughs> I'm wrapping up. You know, I, the, the, I, the report again talks about government hey. disagreeing, mm -hmm. government disagreeing that these people were not deployed for election purposes. Mm -hmm. Disagreeing with the, with the, with the commission report. A new point. I mean, no, that is not a new point. That is to okay. tell you that, again, in 2020, these people we have estimated will be deployed. Okay, you so know, and as I'm saying, that's now, we have, we have, have our vigilante. Have have so we'll move on now to uh, the NDC calling for the immediate gentlemen, please, for the benefit of our viewers, can we?
move on to the next topic. <laughs> NDC to calls for the immediate dismissal of the education minister for his false and irresponsible claims against John Mahama. So I'm going to start out the story by first reading what the um, education minister said in relation to what happened at the Black Star Square with thousands of parents um, going there to just place their, their awards in school and some of these students fainting as, as a result of standing in the sun for so long. So the education minister says, we opened the center, we opened the center at the Independent Square to address the needs of Ghanaians who want to go to school. But some evil people have decided to pay 20 and 50 Ghana cities to people to go there and stage fainting and collapse. Yesterday, some of the collapses were fake. I'm even wondering why they brought little kids to the center. So the NDC has responded, and they're saying they have a very detailed press release, but I'm just going to read a, a, a portion of it. It says, this reckless comment, which is very characteristic of the uh, education minister, um, to criticism since assuming his office as education minister is shameful, to say the least, and exposes his, you know, in, inadequacies as far as um, leading the nation's secondary school placement um, process. They also talked about the, the, the software, uh, which was about just three months old. There was a change of software. So this one that the students were using were going through a pilot, was, was in a piloting phase among others. And they are demanding an unqualified apology and retraction of the comments by their minister uh, within 24 hours, as well as his dismissal from office without delay to save the country. Now, I'll come first to, to you, Honorable Suhini, and then I'll go to Richard on this. Isn't it a bit of a stretch to ask for his dismissal? Is his dismissal a solution to the problem we are currently facing, which is students struggling to place themselves uh, in the right school so that they can embark on their education journey? No, his dismissal will not solve that problem. Okay. But at least his dismissal, even though I have my doubts, uh, that will happen. But if it does happen, will reduce the insults to parents. Okay. At least we'll have one less arrogant, you know, uh, uh, person being paid by our taxes, supposed to give solutions, talking down on us like we are, we are, we are some cheap people that can be bought with 20 and 50 Ghana cities. But, but with all due respect, people are, people, are, people are appointed or, or, or people are their, their job based on merit, not necessarily character traits. Right, so if he's still delivering, is that enough to say, okay, we don't like how he makes us feel, so fire him? That's, you're not talking about public office. Public okay. office character matters. Okay. If it is your own business, you, mm -hmm. can, you, can, you can say that, look, this is my shop, this is how I behave, you either come and do business with me or not. What if but, he said that based on some research but, or investigations he's, he did as well? That is, that, is, that is what is insulting about it. And it's not just the parents who were there. It's mm -hmm. not just the children who were there, but the journalists who were there too to cover this. Mm -hmm. I think they must feel insulted. Mm -hmm. That they could not see through that people had been bars there and they reported this as natural occurrences. Mm -hmm. That's an insult to the journalists who were there. So I think that the journalists who were there must not take this lightly. Mm -hmm. They must, you know, uh, square up. Unless, of course, they were also part of that, you know, uh, 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 plan by mm -hmm. President Mahama. Okay. If, if they were not part of a grand scheme with President Mahama to stage this, I think the journalists must take offence. Okay. Let All me... the journalists were there. Oh, I just started. Oh, sorry. Continue. Oh. Please, please. I just started. We're, we're running out of time, so I need yeah. you to. I, mean, I, I, I think the journalists <laughs> must take offence. But okay. it is true that the minister consistently have demonstrated this level of arrogance and, you know, cluelessness. But I am not surprised because it is the character of the leader. That is why the leader, the president, that's why I'm not too excited or hopeful that he'll be sacked. The president, even when CSOs, when CDD and others talk about corruption in his government, will turn around and blame President Mahama and the NDC for saying that. You know, so it is, it is, it is the mindset of this whole 
you know, uh, enterprise that we have leading this country at this stage, NPP. It is uh, in the mindset. government that we voted Yes, for. it is in the mindset okay. that anything that goes wrong due to their own cluelessness and ignorance must be blamed on the NDC <laughs> and President Mahama. Okay. That is the, the, the strategy. Thank you. And I think that parents must feel very insulted. The journalists who were there must feel very insulted that they, 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 there was no level of empathy from the minister except to exacerbate their pain and their misery by reducing them to people who can be purchased with 20 Ghana and 50 Ghana cities to, to, to come and faint, uh, uh, fake fainting. That is... is just, and I just heard him this morning on your on your on your radio station, you know, repeating the same things shamelessly. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Suhini. Yes, Richard, uh, firstly, what do you make of what the minister said? Mm. We also we, we even covered some of this, the, the the students mm. at Rich Hospital. They they fainted and they were being treated. Mm. Right, so what do you make of him saying? Some people were paid 20 cities, 50 cities to, to fake their fainting and the NDC calling for his uh, dismissal. If I, there is a skill I need to learn. Hmm. And uh, I think... Uh, but let's focus on answering that, my question. Answer your question. This is part of the discussion. Okay. okay? Uh, that uh, Honorable Suini has in terms of managing and using more time. Okay? <laughs> when you say wrap up, then he begins <laughs> okay. a new subject. Okay. So allow me if okay. I'm learning it. Please continue. The, the, the one thing I want to say is that the NDC, mm -hmm. there's a basis for the minister to suggest the appearance of any act such as that because the NDC has done it before, mm. very recently. Mm -hmm. Okay? Bussing people... But he didn't even suggest no, no, the on. appearance. Yeah. He, he, he was... I, I am speaking to Okay, you. continue. Okay? There's a basis to suggest that. Was it a and suggestion? Then, and then, huh? Was it a suggestion, though? Or was he, I don't, was he I don't, pretty... I don't, I don't know how you if take he it, had but for me... It as, oh we think, or perhaps his quote was, some it. evil people have decided to pay. Okay, so that's the condition. That's pretty that, decisive. Yes, yeah, so please, hold on, hold on. What I am trying to tell you is this, that an individual you are dealing with, a contest in which you are communicating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, on the radio station mm -hmm. by the minister, mm -hmm. there is a basis, there's a historical evidence of that individual capable of doing what you are suggesting. Okay, so let's, let's, so, let's, let's so, even so assume for the allow, sake of arguing me, yes. that... There's a basis for it. Yes. You have students yeah. who... Well, I'm, I'm not talking about they're, students they're, yet. I'm just yes, talking... But I'm trying to establish... The minister was referring to students faking I their even, fainting. Yeah, I'm so establishing... Let's, let's, let's put it within the context yes, of yes. young minors yeah. in this country. I, going you are, you are going ahead of, ahead of what I am saying. They are saying. going to school mm -mm. and they have to stay in the hold sun on. for Jifa, days. Hold on. I have not gotten to that. I am telling you... Can we start from there, please? Well, let, let me give you a picture because <laughs> okay. I can't tell you a half story. Okay. Okay? There's a reason to say what the minister said. Okay. Given the behavior of the, uh, the, the contest in which he's speaking. Please continue. Okay? Now, I want to ask you, mm -hmm. okay, and the NDC. Well, the, 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 mm -hmm. the member of parliament. Yes, he represents... Who's also a Ghanaian citizen. He's a yeah, citizen he beyond no, no, anything First else. of all, he, he okay. represents the NDC. Ahead. But okay? I want you to answer my I question. I am answering your question. Okay. Okay? What I want to ask him is this. Was that the only thing in nearly two and a half, uh, nearly two hour interview that the minister said? The reason why we singled that one thing. If we're having a conversation about moving forward our country, solving the problems that uh, young children that you are trying to stress for me want to go to school, want to I'm do this. I'm not stressing it at all. No, I'm no, just, you're saying I'm just the, the situation. The yes, yes. So I'm saying that in the nearly two hours of interview, was that the only thing the minister said? Of course Why not. are we focusing on this it, at the expense of the other things that he said, which is moving us forward? Okay. So I have made a choice, consciously, mm -hmm. not to you know, focus on that discussion. Because for me, the people he was describing have the capacity to bust people to do the things he's talking about. So I won't talk about that. Well, did, you go, did you pass by there? Pass by. I went. On, on Monday? Yes. Did you see the students and their parents and I their families? I saw Very regrettable. And okay. I have, I, I know people who were there, mm -hmm. but this thing... How did you feel wait, wait. being there, Richard? No, I just want to know from your you know experience as Ghanaian, yes. how did you feel seeing minors standing in the sun, parents crying, people talking about stampede, people fainting, pregnant women fainting, 
over like, a process that should just take five minutes. Did you How did you feel? Differ, let's not be emotional. I'm not being emotional. Okay. I so just want point, to know yes. what, 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 Please, what were you your ask the question. Let, let, let's not be dramatic about it. Oh, that's what I, I am trying. Dramatic. What, what I am trying. Well, to, no, because dramatic. I think what I am trying to tell us is this: yeah, when you that say that, you also that is that individual uh, situation that happened. Dramatic. That was last year. The mm -hmm. same thing was done. Mm -hmm. Did we see anything like that? No, we didn't. So okay. why did we so, change so, the software? So, so please, please, please. Why please. did we change no, the no, software? Why didn't we stick to what we used oh, last year? allow me. Okay. Allow me. No, but you I, made a point. So I'm trying to oh, get okay. clarity. You, when, if, when, we didn't, if we didn't face this issue last year, when I finish, you can make your point. Why would we change it and use a software that's three months old? When I finish, you can make your point. What I'm saying is that last year, the same placement, the same center was open for people to go and do their placement, do corrections as appropriately needed, right? We didn't see that. Okay, so the question is, what happened uh, this time? And I am sitting here unhappy, very pained by that, because I told you that I know people were there. So when, when the minister was talking, he talked about evidence suggesting that something like that was done. And I'm saying, let's not focus. If anybody is interested in pursuing this case, they can ask for the evidence. The fact that it is painful, it's unfortunate for the people to be there, uh, does not preclude the minister from saying was, if there is was, justifiable was, evidence. Wait, hold on, hold on, Jifa. There, wait, there's evidence that some people have done something that has resulted in that. This, let's, be, let's be objective. Let's not just look at the picture. Because for me, I'm telling you, I know people who were there and I'm disturbed by it. I'm not happy. The minister you're talking about is not happy about what happened. And what he's saying emanates from his pain and un unhappiness with the situation. So I am saying that let's not dwell on that. Okay, those who are mandated to dwell on that will so to find out if there's any basis for that. As but what I am Ghanian saying is that citizen. at that interview, mm -hmm. he talked about things that are progressive, things that are solving the problems that we are seeking solution to. Let's talk about it. And in fact, when Suini was talking, most of the things I heard him say is cluelessness, ignorance and the rest. I didn't see him tell us one single idea that he and his government or his party would use to solve the problem. Well, so we're well, saying, we, we, we're they, saying, we, we, they, we did we're have an old software that solution. worked. We're that discussing worked. the minister's comments. Right, but, but Honorable Suhini, <laughs> respectfully. He didn't make one comment. Richard, Richard. He didn't make Richard, one comment. Richard, he said a lot of things. There was already a software yes. that worked. Mm -hmm. You just admitted it here that last year, the students went through the same process yeah. and it did not fail. Yeah. We didn't have this issue we are facing today. We no, know that were, technology, if you're going through a piloting phase, yes. you don't pilot with thousands of people. And if it goes wrong, yeah. it's the response that somebody yeah. is, is, is paying people to fake collapsing or the response is, I am sorry, yeah. this is the way forward. Let me focus on the Ghanaian people and yeah. not the opposition, even if they are doing something wrong. Yeah. Should it have been... A, 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 re, a reaction to the opposition or Jifa. a reaction to the Ghanaian people who are currently being inconvenienced Jifa. just because they want their children to have access to free SHS, Is Richard. It? Absolutely. Which of the two should it have been? Absolutely. I appreciate your emotions. Yeah. I am telling you, okay. Jifa, okay. I am Can telling you. Can you answer my question? I will please. answer. I've, I've so been answering your question all along. Okay. I'm telling you, that the nature of your trick, interviews... Your trick is working. Okay. All the, the, the nature... Oh, please. The <laughs> nature of interviews, yeah. everything I want to say, I'm being interjected because you're asking questions. So the minister was sitting in the, in the studio. He was asked a question in a disjointed manner. He can make a comment, but didn't have the opportunity to explain to you everything that you're saying. But he was asked a specific question, and he was forced to answer a specific question, like you're trying to give me do. But I have reasons to explain why I say A or B. But in that situation, he doesn't have the privilege. So if he was making a speech on the matter, he would have outlined his thoughts, and then we'll see the chronology and be able to give us the evidence. Nice but what nice. I am trying to tell you is this. Please wrap up. Uh, this software that you are talking about, as being a software that is being piloted, is the same software that is placed students in schools in record times. We've never had that number of students placed in school at a single time before. Okay. So the software did what it was supposed to do to, a, to an extent. What we saw there is a management issue. It's a human inter, uh, interface issue. There are instances where we need to do better to ensure. Oh, Thank let me, let you me just end very for you. much. You, you've, no, you've ended. Please. There's a question no, no, here from you, okay. from, from, from a viewer to you. It says, Jeff, okay. I kindly ask Richard, if he had been the one assaulted, would he have the same stance he, he has? So this is just you as Richard. They want to know. If 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 an, a national security operative had slapped you, would you still uh, have the same stance? You see, the law unfortunately is not emotional. 
You understand? It's a, it's a no, no, I'm trying to answer. Yeah, I'm answering the question, Jifa. Okay. The law is not emotional. The law is independent. So that's a yes partial. for me. That's a yes. I'm, it's a the, yes or no. If someone the, slapped the, you the, and, and you and Honorable Sam George's shoes, you'll be fine with, with this. But uh, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Because <laughs> okay. there is a law that is <laughs> there which I is impartial. Okay, let, let, yes, let, let the Honorable. Is, thank, is, thank, is, you is, thank you very is, much, is, Richard. Is, Oh, that you I, took, I you took, you, see, you took all my time. First of all, first of all, we the topic you presented was about the minister's comments mm -hmm. and the NDC's call for his yes. resignation. I mean, mm -hmm. or his dismissal. Mm -hmm. We were not discussing the problem of placement and how it could have been prevented or it can be solved. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect me to go talking about what we did, mm -hmm. which you have dismantled, mm -hmm. which has resulted in this chaos that mm -hmm. we have. Okay. Because we introduced our software, we had a technical working committee in place, we had people trained to manage the software, you came, you dismantled the software, brought a new one, you transferred all the people who were trained and left only a secretary there, and you dismantled the working committee and put up a new structure that has resulted in this chaos. If we were discussing the solution, Maybe that is how I would have approached it. But we're looking at the reckless comments of the minister vis-a-vis -vis the NDC's call for his dismissal. And I made the point that I do not have a lot of confidence in that call, even though I support it. Because even his president, the one who appointed him, is fun of blaming the NDC for everything that goes wrong in his government. And my brother here makes the point that he, was, give me a he was at the Independence Square. And that he knows people who were there. Yet, he can't be himself. Oh, to please. admit. Thank you. Please, oh, Jiva, We please. have another time. Please, I'll give you more time oh, than you. Oh, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable <laughs> Suhini is MP for Tamari <laughs> Lord. And Richard Akiamba oh, is Deputy <laughs> Director of this Communications is not democracy. for the what NPD. Is Do not, not go anywhere. We will be right back. Thank you both so much for being with us. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive breakfast daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment and share with your friends.